See who we got here. We have Mr. Railroad and of course Die. <laughs> the Vikings, come on, man. Hey. You gotta root for somebody. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we don't play till Sunday. Hello, Ron. So I was trying to get the uh, some of the West Coast guys on here, I talked to Roy, but he's doing some uh, Silicon Valley line stuff. Let's see if I can maybe track some other West Coast people with this late time. I'm going to be working on this. And hopefully you can hear me. And this is the switches that I'm building for a friend and I've got three of the four in for the first part and we'll uh, do some soldering I got the frog there on the left and then we'll put in some outer rails and then we'll be all set to put in the uh, point rails and the guard rails hopefully next week I return from my trip Switch back and forth here. Otherwise, the, the layout's ready to run. I can roll some trains, too. Just kind of re reloading ore cars from the last little session. And uh, we'll go with that. We'll see if we attract any trolls or any West Coast people. Mystic, I am doing well. I've started my new position at work this week, and hopefully it'll work out. It'll work out for the next uh, couple of years. I can 
work on keeping my coworkers safe and improving conditions around uh, the railroad. So, otherwise, I'll go over to here and we'll start soldering. Plug in my iron here. Still need them to get up. Instant, instant on soldering iron. That would be good. I'm going to do these pieces. I've already cut, so we'll make this frog here. Then we can bring the outside rail out and get that gauged properly. We want one, two, three, and four turnouts all that are one piece. And this is about six or seven feet long. And then there's another lead over there, but they're separate. So I'm going to build this and deliver it. Roller. And then we'll, uh, we'll go from there. And go with flux. Fast tracks flux. It's a little sticky. I like it. I know some people like liquid flux, but for this, it's about as sticky as. glue or paste. And I can apply it to the ties and then stay right on there. And you can see I pre-bent the curves too to take the stress out of them. Otherwise they're the whole time you solder them and the whole time they're on their layout, they're going to want to flex back. If you can take the stress out of them, you're way ahead of the game. Probably putting on too much, but... All right. Hello, Ron. Yes, or or Oregon. You can say hi to my wife. She's from Salem. Chad, hello, real fans. <laughs> yeah, Mister. I think we both do. I think I don't know about two teams that are been in the playoffs that have had more heartbreak than the Saints and the Vikings through all the years. Do the Saints play tonight? I know like Cleveland's playing tonight. I saw Green Bay playing. Where are you in Oregon? That is the question. Saints, Texans tomorrow. Okay. Is that in New Orleans or is that in uh, Houston? I'll set my timer here. Gresham. Oh, Gresham. Set my timer for my soldering iron. Oh, Saints and Packers. Yeah, they might even have some starters. Are there only three pre-games? I don't know if there's three or two. I didn't know. I think they just went down to three games because they added, they made an extra game in the season to make more 
more money as if as if the NFL needs more money <laughs> Three piece preseason game. All right, all right. So, yeah, my wife died. She we she lived in Salem. So now I got to I got to look up a map. There we go. Gresham, Oregon. Okay. You're like a suburb of Portland then. Okay. Yeah, I went out there to visit. She, my wife died. You can see she lived over. I, I fell in love with it. Everybody was friendly. I liked all the coffee shops. And I, I think we were out there the week where it only, it only rained once. But we got where was all the whales? That Depot Bay. We were gonna go whale watching, and uh, I thought that was pretty cool. I thought the I thought the coastline was cool. And we'd like to go back. We'd like to go back and visit. We haven't thought about retiring out there, but. It's too far from the grandkids. I'm trying to think. Because where, Di, where were your friends from? They were they from Tillamook or Astoria? They were somewhere out there. Lincoln City. You don't claim Portland anymore. No, sadly, I don't think I don't think many people do. It's it's gotten a lot, a lot different. You haven't seen all the lighthouses yet. Yeah, we need to go. We need to see them all. That would be good. Let's see, you guys live too far north. I can show you my my palm trees I was making. It's a pretty good looking palm tree. I made that. It's got the little dead branches under there. What's neat is this is wires. You can bend it. You know, you can have like the Gilligan's Island tree here. My friend models uh, San Luis Obispo in Santa Maria, California. And Roy was kind enough to send me a lot of pictures. So. I made a I made a couple. Here's the other one. But yeah, I use that cricket cutter and some th styrene, and it makes all the detailed cuts. Oh, there we go. My solderings are hot enough, and these are kind of cool. I mean, Luke Towen had the. Oh, thank you, Chad. Yeah, Multnomah Fall. Luke Towen did the clinic on these, and I just followed his advice to to an end. I think he used a silhouette cutter or some other kind that makes the best trees yes i have some nice trees so let me go over to that and i'll do some soldering and uh die are you going to be in here for a while you want to handle the chat or somebody else another west coast ron anyone want to co-host and handle the chat <laughs> But I'm going to step over to the layout here. So, to my, it's not really the layout. It's just a piece of uh, Oma soap that I got. I'll put it on a table here. I can position this where I want it. That's the critical thing. And to 
add a piece on here and it's kind of a little wonky, so it's pushing up on the rail. I tack it down one spot. I should be good. the outside. Yeah, where did you go camping? Where did you go camping in Oregon? Boomer's Diorama. Who's Boomer, Chad? Eminem Mark. Welcome. Chris is here. Getting the Can I thought he'd get the West Coast crowd. I'm getting the Canadians. They're awesome Canadians. And uh, Mark, I saw you posted your uh, redemption video for the crossing flashers. The funny thing was, I was watching yours because I actually need a new one. I have one crossing. You had a nap, so he's good. And mine, only one light flashes. <laughs> so, but it's, you know, it's about 10 years old. I bought the circuit from some ho guy made it homemade at a train show. And so I'm like, I wonder if I should replace that now that I only have one light, one light blinking. I think I, I think I always leave like a guy looks like he's fixing it. So. All right. Let's see if I can throw in that other rail here.
now filling the frog. He lives in BC and he's a set designer. Oh, okay. I'll have to check that out. All right, I'll never make my own trouble. Wait a minute. Yeah, you know, it's a process. I never thought I would too either. And then Fast Tracks came along and the quality of the switches was. You know, back when I started, we didn't have all the ones like, like the ones Chris is using and some of these other people. Because I think if I could, I'd probably go with Pico switches now. I have seen those on Friends Layout. And, and uh, the Pico switches are nice. I have a Weller 35 watt with... They call it a ST7 tip on there. It's kind of a pointy tip. And that goes, I go through about two or, two or three of these a year. But a 35 watt seems to work fine. That's the one fast tracks hold. I got another one where you can dial in the temp from Amazon. Not thrilled with that yet. So, and uh, you want to do a Milwaukee road? That would be cool. That'd be in a Gojibic range up there in Michigan. You could have Milwaukee, Northwestern Sioux line. Yeah. No. Uh, Iron ore roads are cool. I like, I even like what Chris is doing with the ore cars, you know, the Canadian barrel cars. Uh, my, my previous layout was the Canadian National in Thunder Bay, so I had ore cars, but I was using the regular ore cars, that you know, the Walters ones, because they didn't have the barrel cars out, and I didn't want to build 200 Sylvan resin kits. <laughs> I think that's worse than track lane, so... Two or throw two, uh, probably within a year. I think it, you, I could probably build 30, 30 to 50 switches with a, with a tip before I just want to toss it out. It just, they wear out. So, and Dan, Dan's watched four vids on handling. See, that's a, that's a clue. You need to start building your own. Yes, my wife's my wife Diana loves lighthouses. I'm surprised they don't have one on the layout, but I named it after a lighthouse. So TS one hundred is that a variable temp one? I don't know if mine's still over here or not. 
but a friend recommended it to me for a lot of electronic parts and it just it wasn't getting up to heat for me it just Yeah, I can't even I can't even find it now. I buried it so far into my toolbox. <laughs> I was like, I don't want this. I want something else. Do any of you have the little mini cameras that you put on the trains? I don't I don't remember if Chris you did that, if you, you do ride alongs. So okay, it is variable. I like this one. I, I made one video with it. I want to play with it some more. I'd like to find a way to build a fake engine front, you know, put it on a car, but have it have it looks like you're looking out the engineer's window. So okay, so downside small power power cord. Yeah, I always end up using an extension because I don't have any outlets near my workbench. And uh, yeah, here you go. See, Mark's wife is wonderful. She kicks out all the trolls. So that's why I only can watch his show for 10 minutes and then she throws me right out. So, but uh, I'm surprised I haven't really attracted. Uh, the spammers yet. I don't think I'm a big enough fish. I was trying to think. They were on some other channels. Uh, I don't know if you do like subscriber only chat, if that cuts down on that. And, uh, but I don't know if that cuts down on anybody new joining, you know. Joining the thread, so I can spam if you want. Thanks, thanks, thanks a lot. Well, let me see what the next trail is I can put in here. And, uh, I'll come right out here. The only tough part is we have to build this. He had code one hundred. So, I can put in that one or this one. This one I'm going to cut here. Let's do the long piece because then I can work on that side and you guys can see it better. Real junior left town. Thank you. 
stick out farther. Okay. And then I use a marker here and mark where I'm going to put the indent for the points to hit. Plus, run it through my roller. So what I'll do is use my roller and pre-curve the rail to take the take the stress out of it. You can do this without poking me in the eye. But you put it through there, and then this one tensions it up, and you get various curves. Hello, Randall. Concrete ties. I don't think it's generational as much as it's, you know, does anybody make, you know, single ties. So now it's got a little bit of a curve in it. I'm going to do a little bit more. I don't know if they make individual concrete ties that you could, you know, because you could make the PC ties look like concrete by just painting them. But I don't know if anybody who's made, like you can buy concrete ties in a bag, you know, like you can buy wood ties. Um, so, but that would be interesting. Maybe there's a product. Maybe the next railroad millionaire so. Are you laying track for an expansion? No, I am building for a friend of mine who has a huge Duluth Masabi and Iron Range layout. It's probably in a 40 by 20 basement, two levels. Takes 10 of us to run it. And it's all steam, the Yellowstones and 80 car ore trains and freight and it's really, really a lot of fun. But he built his yard with the old Atlas switches, and the steam engines do not like them. So I volunteered to uh, rebuild his yard. He took the paper and just drew it out on the top of the rail. He laid it on there and then took a pencil and made the drawing. So I'll hopefully, you know, Mine will do that, so. Three different ties. Okay. Yeah, it might be something to try if 3D print them. Randall, you work in the road or the yard tonight? Let me flip this back over. I got to curve this some more. It picks up in there. Down to here. That's pretty straight. That's curved pretty good. Take take that bend out. Just run it run it through the other way. Where we run into the problem. Yeah, 
See, that's pretty nice there. See, take takes all the stress out because it wants to be that shape. And it won't constantly try and break in the future. And what I can do here, because this will be track gauge, I'll use my micromark track gauges on there. And then we'll have that straight. I'm going to cut right here, and then I'll make that piece too. For now, i got to go dig. This one I have to go cut where the red mark is. i got to remove the bottom of that. So, see you, die. Just paint the ties gray. I like that, you know, which which brings up the, the greatest argument and one of the greatest arguments in model railroad building. What color is concrete? So if you can answer me that, I'll show you what I use. But what do you guys use for concrete? Throw it in the comments. Okay, wish there was more. Early Jeeps, Baldwin's, of course, oh, for what scale? There we go. See, I'm loved. Doing the AC44. They're, they're neat engines. I, I can't use them, but I hope you guys do it too. So, What scale do you want the Jeeps or Baldwins in? Because I'm the list of engines in HO scale that are not made is really getting less and less, you know. So you use Woodland Scenics, okay? <laughs> now, now I can't find it. I use like the Krylon spray paint, but the name of it is Fossil. So, and uh, yeah, and concrete's even different based on what part of the country you're in for what they use as the mix. So in different light, yeah, I think concrete's the most variable color <laughs> in all in all model routing. Grandpa Rails, welcome. Yeah, oh, use actually true color. So that must come in the jars, the spray spray paint then. Okay. Yeah. But uh Uh, rust oleum makes the uh, makes the satin uh, fossil paint that I've seen. Um, see if I can find it here. Here we go. Um. 
Yeah, it looks like Rust Oleum uh, makes that. Uh, that color for uh, twelve dollars or something there. Walmart. You know. See if I can find it here. So, Vallejo concrete. I like Vallejo. And, uh, oh, you wanted an N scale. Yeah, N scale's still lacking. I think it's nice scale models. Scale trains. Scale trains is making more N scale and Rapido. And some nice ones compared to uh, what N scale started with. <laughs> I don't know if that was that was very good. So, all right, John. John's in here. Hello, John. Thank you guys for joining, chatting up. I wonder, what, I wonder what Chris uses for concrete. I know he's got some st structures and bridges and things in there, but we should we should have a whole chat on what colors <laughs> what color is concrete. We can have a fight up, start a poll. Yeah, yeah. I don't mind the airbrush, but you know, for things you can be portable with. But it's tough to bring it and the compressor over to the layout to paint sides of rails and things like that, at least for me. I got too big of a compressor. And uh, so, all right, we'll switch this over. And here comes a little noise. I'm going to grind that rail. Then we can get on with... All right. Congress, yeah. Paved road. Okay, if paved road. So you've done like, asphalt road. There's another one. What color is asphalt? So concrete as a yellowish. Yeah, I would I would agree with that. I I, I would agree with that, I think. So like 
this is a portion of my oral loader. And the, the color I'm looking at there is different even from what I see because it's fluorescent and stuff. And so like this is this is that fossil with some weathering on it. But I think as long as you think it looks right, go for it. I, I don't think concrete should be white. And it don't should be, should be that dark, so. Oh, you do that to make the, okay, you mix it to make the various, yeah. You gotta be a chemist, get a color wheel. All right, so Chad, what engines would you upgrade to if I changed my engine or freight roster? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, I do like oddball engines. I think everybody, almost every iron hauling road is EMDs, SD9s, 18s, 38s. So I think something, something crazier. Like if I went modern, you know, like the Rapido M420s or some B23s or B, B40s, you know, something like that. And uh, one, of, one of the things about engines that I originally wanted to do to make this really odd was I wanted to put in overhead wire and have electrics uh, move the ore. <laughs> you know, like 80 ton electrics around like Kennecott Copper and some of the other places. I thought that would be pretty unique. That, but then I then I sobered up, and uh, and uh, did that. So if I can show you this, so there's the notch. And what I did is cut out the bottom of the rail. There you can see it. So this will be where the points come over. And so they won't hit the foot of the rail. You know, the rail's like in an eye. So I basically cut off the bottom of the eye. So when the points come over, it'll hit just the, the ball of the rail. And uh, Fast Tracks makes a tool for this, but it's, for me doing this kind of crudely, it's really, really simple to get after it with a Dremel. Just I got a bench clamp over there and a clamp and I can just go at it and then clean it up with a file. But yeah, it helps to notch that little portion where you know you're going to. You can see it's cut out there. You're going to have the points come across. And then nothing, nothing will interfere. You know, so that's what, you know, the, the number the one and two cause of derailments, you know, are bad frogs and bad points, you know. And that's the thing with these tracks. I can make perfect points and perfect frogs. Yeah, sem the, the seminar for concrete still going on. I'm still waiting to hear some more. We haven't figured out concrete ties unless we 3D print them. I have a friend, Eric Boone, who is 3D printing ties or wood ties in their segments with all the detail on. And he's 3D printing even the plates so he can hand rail it, hand spike the rail. But he, he doesn't print out each individual tie. He'll print out, I think it's like a foot long and it's flexible. And yeah, yeah, no visual aids. If I, it's in one of the videos I did of the our modelers retreat, I interviewed him and his, his wonderful daughter built a layout. So I interviewed her, but I showed that 3D printer and he has a resin printer and he does CAD for a living. He's a CAD designer for a living. So I think that's what's keeping me from doing a 3D printer is I, it would take me six months to learn it. I'm just a caveman. If I could take my phone and scan something like in an app. And I know there's a lot of designs out there I could already download, but because I'm looking at getting 
I want to get new ore shoots for my dock. I want to have some ones like that look different from the Walters. I know we all want unique stuff. And otherwise, we're all building the cornerstone layout, right? Yeah. But I, I think if you 3D printed concrete ties, that's, you know, print, print out a strip at a time, you'd be fine. I know Atlas makes them. And I think microengineering makes the ties. So, you know, you could use that. I mean, I use flex track. I don't hand lay the main line. That's that's the quality of flex rail flex track we have now. That's insane. But you know, I just build a turnout. So I'm trying to think on the prototype if the if the switches. Still have wood ties, but I think they have concrete ties too. So if you can you can 3D print switch ties, you know, for a six or an eight or a four, or whatever you wanted. You know, and then you can just use microengineering or atlas. I was even thinking of having a stretch of my layout with concrete ties on it for like just showing a test and I actually had it on there for a while, but I ripped it out. So, and, uh, <laughs> they hit the switch frog. Yeah, yeah, the frogs, frogs take all the beating. That's why there's always welders out there asking for time, and they just keep welding and welding and welding until they fall apart. But the frogs, you know, that's all the contact is in the frog, you know, and all the derails, you know, I would say the majority of human factor derails are shoving through a, a switch that's not lined or is gapped, you know, that you haven't, you didn't look at it enough. And that's where you get the human factor derailments. Yeah, a loaded coal train just pound switches, absolutely destroy them. Just when I painted the foam the concrete color, I liked how the holes in the foam are. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's a bonus. <laughs> I like that. You know, I, you know, it's always good when you're like, oh, I stumbled onto this. Now, now it's dirty and, <laughs> and pitted. But don't tell everyone your secret. Just you tell them you're a great modeler and you picked out those those exact holes. <laughs> That's kind of funny. But it didn't attack the foam, right? It was just there were divots in the <coughs> excuse me, guys, in the like what the pink foam were you using or not? You weren't using florist foam. And uh I'm a I'm a big fan of florist foam. I use I use this for almost all my scenery. Because you can carve on it and put grass on it and trees stick in it. And I got a section here. You know, when I'm working on a little view block by the road. And I used to see then I'll stick all these bushes on there I got. And then we'll go to the trees and then the shrubberies. These are my super tree bushes. All the scraps from super trees. I hot glue them to a pin, like those uh, Woodland Scenics pins. I cut them off with a big cutter. And uh, hot glue pin. And then they just... They just stick into the scenery, you know. I will get the old palm trees out here, and then the scenery. You know, you just push it in, and then you got shrubbery, shrubbery, and then from there I add the, the super trees, and then add the the ground foam and the foliage and stuff like that. Okay, craft foam. All right. Foam. How do you model rocks with it? 
How do how do you model rocks with that? That I do not know. Yeah. I would like to see that if you had a video. I, I've always done rock casting, so I'm looking for I'll take any other way. Okay, H, Kansas City, Kansas to Memphis. Must be Tulsa to Memphis. Those, those are BNSF trains by the initials. UP, we only have we have two letters for everything. A L S P C H P R. But yeah, I'd like to know how, how you do rocks. That would be, I would like to see that. That would be cool. Well, I'll go attach this and see what we can get going here. So that's all going. Dan, all right. Mark, thank you for stopping by. Loved your show the other day. I love that you fought through the errors and then you showed your redemption video. That's live streaming's fraught with that. But I appreciate all everything you guys do on Thursday. Tim, Chris, you missed Dave. I hope he's doing good. So, Mr. Linfors, how are you, sir? Did you know that one of your one of your former co-workers is now working with me? That that Rachel's down on the on the Uncle Pete down there. Pink foam was carved to look like a rock face. Yeah, I think I don't know what they used. I you know, I always see these things with a soldering iron or something, but I think the fumes would get to you. I would like to, you know, see the you know what they look like. But I'm a big fan of rocks that fit the location. 
you know, whether it's sandstone or shale or like in my area, rather than just haphazardly putting a rock out there, you know, you see rock outcroppings on a railroad because they, they carved away at them. So, steak knife. Well, I suppose a steak knife, you know, you can put layers in and show, you know, where it's carved and stuff like that. Um, you know, I, that's what I would, that's what I've done. And then try and match it up. Rocks are, rocks are tough, so. Oh no, you got the showstopper. Okay, good. Glad you're feeling better. Glad it didn't wipe you out. I think uh, I think my wife and I are some of the last people on earth who have not got the showstopper. So we've been lucky. Hope, hope you're feeling better, my friend. So now it's time for... The old NMRA gauge. When I do the frogs, you have to get the the distance exact. So I hold this right between the frog and the outer rail. And that's, you know, all the other gauges you can kind of be iffy, but you can't you can't be off on the frogs and you can't be off on the points. So your handling tracks this is this becomes the, a real track gauge i i kind of wish they would they'd make they'd make these little points bigger <laughs> i should have somebody 3d print my own but these are neat tools i think i've got two of them like everyone else because i thought i lost one i buy one then i put it right next to the one i already had so and uh I think I have this and I have a narrow gauge one. Yeah, I think I built, maybe I built narrow gauge ones for you, Dan. I don't know. I know someone, oh, that was Ed Petrie too, I think. And stuff, so. I will go and solder that stock rail and the frog, and then we can finish up the other portion. Here we go.
All righty. What did I miss? Ah. <laughs> Another Dan Lin for you for the guitar. I, I think you should you should admit to being that Dan Lin for it, so. All right. Randall, oh, Randall left. And uh, yeah. Isolation. Dan, are you going to keep modeling like an HO scale still or still just going to do the big scale? Uh, 
will be three two by four modules in an L shape. Will they be FREMO compliant? You know, you know, I wonder because that would be a great opportunity to time in. You know, we were just talking about FREMO and, uh, oh, not at all. Okay. I wonder if you get it, build FREMOs to attach to the end of it or something. Because I always wanted, like, if I had a FREMO module and instead of hanging on the wall for 340 days a year, I'd, like, make it a part of the layout. So I think that would be a... A new idea. It's still going to go narrow gauge, Dan. I just, that narrow gauge stuff you have is just so cool. I'm so glad you brought that to the modeler's retreat. I'd like to, I'd like to see more of it. I'd still like to build with you a Fremo dual gauge module. And then we could build some narrow gauge branches going off. I think people would think that would be cool. That would be fun. I've, I've always wanted to build dual gauge switches, <laughs> that and lap switches. So, all right, still doing narrow gauge. Reaching per, yeah, yeah. Scale Pacific up to New York City. What are you going to do in New York City? We'll go visit our friend Heath. All right, still going to do the narrow gauge. Yeah, that Blackstone stuff is narrow. It's so cool. I know we're, I don't know if you know Joe Binish, but, you know, in our little operators group, which, you know, they want to go to Broadway. Oh, very nice. Our little operators group, he's organizing a trip to Wisconsin over there in Eau Claire to operate three layouts, and they're all narrow gauge. Two are HO and one's ON30. So there are narrow gauge fanatics, weirdos around here somewhere. <laughs> so, but uh, go to Broadway. Yeah, I wonder if you could even get tickets to some of the good shows. Go see Hamilton or something. That'd be fun. That would really be cool. Daryl is here. Scott. Okay, I haven't seen Scott for so long because I don't go down to Jeff Otto's. I know Jeff's healing up from some stuff. But that's mainly where I saw him. And... So, yeah, I always wanted to see his layout, too, get him on there. And uh, more narrow gauge. And hopefully this fall, with my new schedule, we will be doing a lot of live streaming layout tours. A lot. And that'll be a lot of fun. That'll be, uh, we got a lot of layouts lined up. California, New York Central, probably do Dan Dosa's commercial. That'll be a fun one. Greg Dahl's Missouri layout. Um, a few more we have around the cities. Uh, the N-Scale Clinchfield. You still live in south of town? Yeah. Daryl's here. See, Daryl, I attracted the California crowd. I went on. I popped on late. I don't know who used to do Friday nights. Was Crossed Anchors on Friday nights or were they Saturday nights? I remember them being the juggernauts of the weekend. They were really, really fun hosts and uh, other things like that. So. What I'm doing, Daryl, is uh, building these uh, yard, this curved yard ladder for a friend. And uh, 
just soldered in the piece where you can see the uh, the clear car there from Micromark. And I've got all the frogs in. So now I'm just adding the stock rails. And then next week I can put in the points and the guardrails. I'm going to make these hinged points because that'll that'll last longer and there'll be a lot, you'll have a lot more of the points in gauge for the steam engines. And it should be should be a pretty cool thing to go. This on a Luth Masabi and Iron Range layout. And for my for my friend Milt who fought a valiant battle against the showstopper. Big, strong guy, you know, six foot, two, three, strong, healthy guy, and it leveled the poor man. Just everything, so. And uh, so. Anybody have any announcements? Any new videos coming out? Any new products? Any new toys they bought or looking forward to buy? We're coming up on in Minnesota, Dan will say that we, we call it we have flea markets, but they're just trains, model trains, memorabilia, whatever. There's sometimes there's layouts of shows, but we used to probably have eight or nine of those from fall to spring. I think there was three or four clubs that would each put on two or three of them. So every month there was a, there was a train show with sales. And uh, so I'm kind of saving up my money for that. And uh, ah, the essentials. Yeah, I, I agree. Cause that's, it's not as flashy as a new sound equipped engine or passenger train, but it's necessary. And that's when I was when I was building my layout and all my money was going into wheels, you know, metal wheels and Katie couplers. I'm watching everyone else buy all these new engines. <laughs> and uh So yeah, but I but I think the wood and the foam and the track and the, the wheels and the couplers are the unsung heroes. It's like progress that no one will see. So it's kind of it's a double-edged sword. But if you do lay the foundation right, you know, with bench work, lay your rail correctly, you know, get your feeder wires in there. And uh West Coast guy. I don't know. Ron was here. Ron, Ron Moen was on the coast. I know we had the Canadians here for a while. And uh, Randall was here from Arkansas. So yeah, even even this late at night, we're still attracting <laughs> people in the East Coast time or Central time. Must not have anything to do on their Friday night. And uh, so, yeah, we'll have to get the word out. I invited some other West Coast guys, but there's Friday nights, a lot of club meetings. I know the Silicon Valley lines meets. I think they meet online. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, that's, that's a few guys we always see in chat. I don't know. I didn't advertise this either. You know, I just I, I was working enough today and I thought, well, I can set up two cameras. See how my OBS is going. Anybody wants to come down and chat in the train room cuz I can I can fire up the layout and run. And uh Bernard's in the corner. Oh, we have a corner. For train guys, we have a roundhouse so we can't get cornered. 
but if you want to you want to join in the conversation, Daryl, you can add your input as to what color is concrete. And so we we pretty much kept it below a fist fight, but concrete is in the eye of the beholder. But I can show you this, these, Daryl. You'll probably like this, having a West Coast layout. So here's my palm trees <laughs> that I'm making for a friend. What do you think of those? And then they're bendable, too, so you can have the, the Gilligan's Island one there. I got this one here. And they've got the the dead dead leaves underneath there. The first ones I made, I actually put the coconuts in there, but no one could see them. But these are pretty tall ones. I made a short one before, but these are these are pretty big. These are probably a scale 80, 90 foot palm tree. All cut out with a cricket cutter, painted, and then glued. Glue it on a piece of craft foam. Here, I even got some leaves. So this is, that's one of the palm leaves. Look how thin it is. That's pretty cool. And I'll glue a piece of uh, florist wire to the back and then paint them. Then I'll clip that. Then the top. The wire. There's a solid core wire wrapped with florist wire and covered with gesso. And then the top is uh, air drying clay that I poke holes in. When that dries in, I can stick the, stick the palm leaves in there. Well, thank you. Yeah, your layout has the cool palm trees. I always like looking at those in the background after, you know, I just, I have birch trees and pine trees, and so that's you know, that's all I get. So yeah, I figure you're allowed to be palm trees and a couple other guys. This is for my friend. He models the Santa Maria Railroad up in Santa Maria and Guadalupe, a little short line. He's got a really, really neat layout with a really neat operating scheme. And the feature of his layout is moving perishables in the 50s and 60s with the iced reefers. And he has you go through all the steps of cleaning the car, pre-icing, pre-cooling, loading. Then you top ice it, you know, and then maybe it can go, you know, depending on what it could do, so. And, uh, okay, hold chat. Yeah, okay, no, I appreciate it, but I've been on one hour and 35 minutes, so I was I was going to shut her down here anyway. And uh, like I said, we'll talk about some Wednesdays or some other nights. I, I got most, I got all the soldering I pretty much wanted to do to, tonight. I got the last frog in, and I got the other rail in. And I had a... Had a long day today. I actually got to meet with the president and CEO of Union Pacific Railroad. Great guy. He came with a couple of vice presidents and stuff and toured the yards where I work at. And so I was one of the ones chosen to have lunch with him, being head of the safety program. And uh, very down-to-earth person. It was very nice, Mr. Uh, you probably Lance Fritz. Sharp. Smart guy, smart guy. So, um, but that's a, that was a busy day. So, Bernard, so we got two Bernards, the other one's in Canada, Bernard C. Northeast Nevada by the Ruby Mountain Range. Northeast, so are you up by Wells? I've been to Vegas, and then I've been up to Wells, and I think it's called Alazan, where the Western we I rail found up there where the Western when the Western Pacific and the Southern Pacific were separate, 
and uh, <laughs> did I put on a tie? No, no. It was it was kind of sad because the managers where I worked like rented a tent and tables and they had all outside. And, and of course, you know, here in the Midwest, we got two inches of rain this morning. <laughs> it was coming down, and uh, my lawn thanked it. But so we so we had to eat inside. No, we didn't wear ties. In fact, some of the guys just got off trains. There were track guys that came in there and he talked to. It was kind of nice. But uh, it's great to meet him. I got pictures with him. I said I don't know if I'll ever see him again, but hope so. But. Yeah, northeast Nevada. How close are Ruby Mountain Range? And I got to Google that up. I Googled up where Gresham, Oregon was. Now I got to figure out where the Ruby Mountain Range is. I love learning these things here. Ruby Mountain, search nearby. Oh, yeah, that's up by Elko. Elko and Alizon, Wells. I think it was funny. We were real family. My friend lived in Salt Lake, and I was going to school in Montana, so I came down, and we drove out there, and I think his truck, we got stuck in this town by the tracks, and so we were going to go knock on the door of this building to see if we could, you know, get some help. It was pre-cell phone days, and then we realized it was – the local cat house establishment. I'm like, oh, we're in Nevada. We're not knocking on that door. <laughs> that phone call will cost us too much money. So worked out at Palisades in Eureka. Oh, okay. Western Pacific was a nice road from what I heard. It's real small, family. You know, everybody knew everybody. And uh I always heard good things about the the wobbly. It's a great railroad to model, I think, if you want scenery and run long trains. But I think if you want to switch, have industries, you almost you have to model the Sacramento where the way west portion. I would I would think. But. Uh, yeah, I was I always like the Western Pacific. What a colorful railroad. What an amazing, amazing neat little railroad. But <clears throat> so Tom's gotta head out. Yeah, I'm gonna head out here too. I'm gonna I'm gonna go about six more minutes, so I go 145. Thank you. Thanks for stopping by. Thank all you guys. And uh I, I never know what'll happen on a pop-up chat. <laughs> kind of feel like like flying crows sometime, you know. It's just, I'm going to work on the layout. I might as well turn on the camera. If I I have two two more cameras on order so I can set them up around the layout, which would be a lot better for operations. Because right now I'd put a camera on my gimbal. And that, that's usually good. Then you don't get the shaky cam. I, like, I got a Zion. I don't know if anyone else has a gimbal. But I ordered a couple webcams I'm going to try and install around. So if I have an operation session, you can see most of the layout. Watch the trains go. I think I'm going to an operation session tomorrow. My friend Greg, he models St. Louis, Missouri. And his layout features... Few, but really huge, huge industries. An automobile plant and a huge brewery. And then some other ones on there. And uh, Yeah, all of that, you know, Western Pacific, Williams Loop, you know, Salt Lake City, you know, model the interchange with the Grand, you know, Roper Yard, all the way through the Feather River. Even even the line north up to Oregon, you know, from Ketty. The pictures are phenomenal. It's just 
one of the most beautiful layouts you know that I've ever seen so all right thanks Daryl we'll we'll get organized yet on our on our West Coast Wednesday and uh, Bernard and everybody <clears throat> appreciate everyone for stopping by and uh, I think we'll uh, we'll say good night from the old split rock I appreciate all you guys everybody take care have a good weekend and uh, thanks Thank you.